Now the code I'm going to be accelerating for this video is a simple vector add function. Looking at the pure Python code, you can see we're adding the elements of the NumPy array A to B and storing them in C. In the main function, we're initializing by a large number of elements. We're initializing array A to all ones, array B to all ones, and then our storage array C to zeros to make sure we're writing the correct value. We then call our vector add function. We will print out the first five elements and the last five elements of C to make sure we're getting the right value and then print out how long it took. So let's go ahead and run this pure Python version. And you can see we get all twos as expected in about 12 seconds. Now the first acceleration technique I'm going to show in this series of Python videos is to simply tell the NumPy compiler I have a function that I want it to parallelize for me. It then automatically compiles and moves that function to the GPU. We'll be doing this using NumPy's vectorize capability and applying it to our vector add function. Now the trick to using vectorize is that the target function must be a scalar function. This that means that all input and output parameters must be scalar values recognized by NumPy, such as float32, float64, int32, and so on. Currently, our vector add function is set up to receive all three arrays as input parameters and not return any values. The vectorize decorator expects the target function to accept some number of scalar inputs and return a single scalar output. So our first step is to take our current vector add function and turn it into a scalar function. To do that, we return the result of scalar A plus B, and we no longer need to pass in C. Now the number pro compiler can apply the scalar function automatically across our NumPy arrays on the GPU. And our last step is to modify the main function and change how the vector add function is called. We are now returning C instead of passing it in as a parameter. Now to use the vectorize library, we first need to import it from Numba Pro. Like so. Now there are two ways to tell the compiler how to generate an accelerated version of our scalar function. For this video, I'm going to be using a Python function decorator. A function decorator goes on the line immediately above our function and begins with the at symbol. The first input parameter to this decorator is a list of strings containing the signature of the function that is to be accelerated. Remember that this function will be compiled to the GPU machine code, therefore the compiler needs to know the data types to expect for both input and output parameters. For our example, we're going to assume this function could be called with an array of float32. So let's create that signature. The first entry is the output data type expected from the function, and then the remaining are the types for the input parameters. So for A, we have float32, and for B, we have float32. By default, the vectorize function will create a compiled, single-threaded CPU version of the function. But that's not any fun, so we're going to create a massively parallelized GPU version. So we'll set the target equal to GPU. And that's all there is to it. Now in running this code, the first time the Python interpreter encounters our vector add function, it will create a compiled GPU version for float32 NumPy arrays, along with transferring all needed data to and from the GPU. On each subsequent call to this function, it will use the already compiled code. There's nothing else I have to change in my main function, so if we go ahead and run this again after saving. You see we get the same result, all twos, and it took much less time. And just to prove this is indeed running on the GPU, I will profile this application using NVIDIA's command line profiling tool, NVProf. You'll see here the CUDA kernels as well as the data transfers going on. Just in case you missed it, we just profiled pure Python code executing on the GPU, and we didn't have to write a single line of that GPU code ourselves. Very cool stuff. If you look carefully at the profiling data, you will see we're spending most of our time transferring data back and forth between the host and the GPU, and very little time doing actual computation, as the vector add function we use is extremely simple. 
In real-world situations, you'd want to offload more computationally intense functions to the GPU and minimize the amount of data transfer. Stay tuned for the next CUDA Python video demonstrating the use of libraries and data management to get even more acceleration on the GPU from within our Python code. Thanks for watching this edition of CUDAcasts.